Right guys, for step one, we're going to draw the top view first for our geometric solid, our prism, the base, which could be the top base or the bottom base. We'll draw it first and then we'll go ahead and measure 10 millimeters away from the top. Place our little dot, which we're going to be using to draw or construct our axes. Once we've done that, we'll move on to our front view and project all our drawing or our points to the front view. Right, step number two, we're going to, once projected all our points up to the front view, we'll go ahead and measure the height of the prism and state what we see when we look from the bottom, or well not really from the bottom, but from this angle in our top view. It's my eyeball. So what would I see? I would see that surface over there, this surface over here, and this surface over here. Therefore, I'll be seeing that surface there, this surface here, and this surface here. Step number three, I need to add the cutting plane. I need to measure, as stated by the question, 20 millimeters high. It starts and cuts through the left hand side of the shape. A further is 60 millimeters, so one, two, and a further is 60 millimeters high. One, two, three, four, five, six. It cuts through the right hand side of my shape. I'll simply line them up. Draw my line long enough, and as shown in the question, The arrows are included. And you'll label them accordingly. Please label between 4mm guidelines. Nice and neatly. Right, in this step over here, step four, we're going to simply take our measurement away from the top view, about 10 mils. I realize that this is going to go through my, my cutting plane, so if you want to, you can make it slightly bigger, further away. And you can construct, in fact, you can draw in solid already, because we know the height of my front view my x1 y1 axis and label it and then introduce your 45 degree line as it is a first angle orthographic projection and start projecting all your lines to the 45 degree line just note that this is a line, these two points are in line with one another, therefore they project with a single line to the 45 degree line. I'm projecting them all the way up as it's a prism. Now that we know the parameter, the width of the actual object, we can go ahead and put our x, y axis in solid line and label it. Step 5, we're going to now 
look at our top view and apply the cutting plane to my top view if you look at it it's cutting right through the actual object of the front view and I need to depict that cut surface in my top view I use a little quick trick I use this little line over here that you can see I move this line to there so that I can have equal intervals in this case I don't have to use a ruler and I can save a lot of time by simply using little tips and tricks along the way to explain this if I had to put numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and 6 and project them up this would be the bottom of number 1 top of number 1 6 and 2 6 and 2 3 and 5 3 and 5 and number 4 bottom of 4 top of 4 the cutting plane produces cutting points so therefore this over here will be cut point 1 this will produce cut point 6 and 2 since they are in line with one another this one here will produce cut point 3 and 5 and this one will produce cut point 4 now if I had to project cut point 4 down it would need 4 and 4 at exactly the corner point note that I now am looking from the top I'm drawing my eyeball over here when I project cut point 3 and 5 onto 5 and 3 over here they simply fall back onto 3 and 5 on the top view 6 and 2 projected down land on 2 over here and 6 over here and 1 point one in the top view therefore this entire area over here that you see will be cross hatched in this step we're going to be drawing the left side view using the numbers from my top view and my front view I'm going to project the cut points across note I haven't projected the heart across because I'm now looking at it from this point of view my eyeball and when I look from this point of view I will be able to see the cut surface which means I will see the bottom portion of this shape and I'll take this portion right off I'll go project from my top view 2 and 3 1 and 4 6 and 5 and then I look for the cut points as well so therefore 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1 the cut points so happen to fall on the base points or in line with the base points in my top view so therefore I can use them in my left side view 1 and 1 meets up over here 2 and 2 3 and 3 4 and 4 5 and 5 6 and 6 back to 1 this will be the surface that we will be able to see when looking from this area over here note that this surface over here if we do see it it will need to be the bottom portion therefore 
we'll have to link this to the bottom and not to the top. Please don't you draw the big dots like I have. All you do is have little pinprick lines. Or dots. Just remember to label your. It's going to help you in the long run. And we have a crosshatch surface. Because we see this cut surface. Yet again I'm using... The, either this line over here or the length of these measurement lines I'm going to use this line over here for now for accurate increments so that the distances between the cross hatching lines or the sectioning lines are the same at 45 degrees that is Right, remember in geometric solids, it's probably the only time where you're going to be including your hidden detail behind cross hatching. You don't do this in machine drawing. So, geometric solids is the only time where you include hidden detail behind cross hatching. In this step here, you might notice that we got lucky in the fact that the cutting plane is going at 45 degrees through my front view. Therefore, I need to project from each one of my cutting points at 45 degrees into the opposite direction. Just note that my top view is seen from this angle over here. Therefore, this cannot be my true shape of section. When I look from this side over here, my left side view, this cannot be my true shape of section. But when I look at it, at it from a 90 degree angle I'll be able to see the cut surface much much clearer okay and, and accurately so you might notice that I don't have enough space over here so I've taken my XY axis from this side over here and I've placed it over here just note that I have an XY axis placed over here that is named X2 Y2 because I have to use this as a reference a reference point to state my measurements from so if I'm going to be projecting from my front view, I'm then going to have to take my measurements from my top view. So just note again, I need a reference line to be able to take my measurements from. So I use the XY axis just like I use the XY axis over here. And I take my measurements from the XY axis to cut point 1. XY axis to cut point 2. XY axis to cut point 6 xy axis to cut point 3, xy axis to cut point 5, xy axis to cut point 4 and I transfer all those measurements from the xy axis to cut point 1 so I plot that point, xy axis to cut point 2, xy axis to cut point 6, xy axis to point 3, xy axis to cut point 5, xy axis to cut point 4 once I've plotted each one of these distances on the necessary lines, these lines that I've projected up over here are spaced equally to these ones over here. Alright, so I've taken this line over here and I've placed, well, an, an XY axis line that would have been over here and I've placed it over here because I don't have any space. Once I've plotted each one of these points over here, I go ahead and I join them and I put the cross hatching in there, name a true shape of section and I have now fully answered my question with showing all necessary constructions. Thanks guys for watching and I hope you guys have enjoyed it.